All right, people. Review of the week time. So, a lot to get into, a lot to review, a lot to preview. Obviously, this week we have Art of Paterbiev, Dmitry Bivol. Have a look there on screen. Epic trailer, epic promo. And if you want to watch that fight, you will see the G-Man link in the description below. It'll be shown live on the zone. I honestly cannot wait for this fight. I've said this before, I'll say it again. This and Fury versus Usyk. Once we got Spence Crawford out of the way last year, they were the two fights that were next on my list and fights that I just don't care, I just want to see. And when I say I don't care, the undercard could be rubbish and I wouldn't care. So long as we get to see those fights. Because they're just the fights that need to be made. I'll talk more about that as the video goes on because we obviously got to do a review of what happened last night and on Friday, of course, as well. So, Nick Ball made his return to the ring and he only fought back in, 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 in January, or sorry, January, June. He fought in June on the Matchroom Queensbury show. He was the closest Queensbury came to taking a loss that night against Raymond Ford. Some people felt as though he should have taken a loss in that fight. But like that, some people, many people feel he should have actually already been a world champion and he should have actually been a unified champion after the Ray Vargas fight. And again, making Saudi Arabia almost his second home, really, because he's been out there a couple of times now. This was a return to Liverpool. He went in there against Ronnie Rios. Before I talk about his fight, let's just talk about briefly the undercard. I seen Brad Strand's KO over this guy, Marvin uh, Salono. Looked a devastating knockout. Looked a real big knockout. Uh, Jardin, Jardin Herrera now he looked quite good this is one of Frank Warren's new signings it's a Cuban fighter he's 16 and 0 with 14 knockouts he's only 22 years of age and you know Frank Warren it's really it's a good thing that he's signing these new talents from you know across the pond it shows where Warren's at in his promotional career, like that he really is in a good place. Because Warren's always been, for the most part anyway, been a UK-based promoter. Now he's branching out and signing international stars. Frank Warren is, and obviously they want to go with Quintbury because they know Frank Warren at the point he's at in his career now. I mean, he really is in a driving seat. He's doing brilliant things. And this was a really, really good show too, by the way. It was a really good show by Frank Warren on TNT. One of the fights that of the night, really, that was on that card. I say fights night, it was just incredible to watch, was Jack Rafferty versus Henry Turner. I'm pretty sure Terry Flanagan was in the corner for Jack Rafferty. Well, it certainly looked like him anyway. And Jack Rafferty was getting fairly comprehensively outboxed early on in this fight. You know, Henry Turner was doing what he needed to do. It was, it was, what was going to say competitive? Like, Jack Rafferty was never, he never looked really in desperate trouble or anything like that. Never, never, never. But he was able to really hurt Henry Turner in round number nine with a body shot. Now, he went down from a combination, primarily body shots, but he landed a big, hard, hooden body shot on him. And Henry Turner immediately reacted. Like, he, you could tell he was in pain, but he didn't go down. But Jack Rafferty could see that, okay, he's hurt, I'm going to attack. And he flipping let in a body attack on Henry Turner. Henry Turner went down, went back to the corner. He looked a beaten man. Like, his face looked bloodied. He, he looked beaten and the corner they said save him for another day at the end of the day and the commentators were saying as well paul dempsey 24 years of age yeah it's a it's a damage and loss it's a great win for jack rafferty but henry turner he's only 24 he can come again and probably best to save him for another day because i think the right was on the wall for him in that ninth round going into the 10th round so that was the co-main and nick ball against ronnie rios you know i like nick ball i think he's a great fighter i think he's entertaining as hell and nick ball is one of those fighters who he didn't turn pro to a lot of you know fan intrigue i mean this was a guy only about five years ago was fighting on the small hall scenes you know he really only came into the attention when he went with queensbury i'm not sure it was in 2019 i know he fought on a couple of those behind closed door shows in 2020 with queensbury and that was the first time we really kind of got to know nick ball when he fought, who was it he fought? Well, I know when he fought low IQ on the undercard of Fury versus Dylan White, that was kind of really people were like, right, this is Nick Ball. And he performed very well in that fight, very well. You know, devastating. He had a couple of shows, the York Hall. But he was one of those fighters who, he, I, I, yeah, he, he was on the Small Hall show. I mean, if you type in Nick Ball, like say 2017, 2018, you'll see like the Small Halls he was fighting on way back then. So he's come up the hard way, very talented fighter. 
and he's a fighter who i mean he's had like what six fights in the last two years for someone who's at that level of world level and to be going in there it's not like he's having six fights in the last two years and he's you know he's picked up a, a vacant title or a weak champion and he's defended it against you know such and such and such and such you know such and such is ranked by the wba and you know his record is you know 20 wins six losses and he only won his last fight on a split it's not like that he's fighting good fighters ray ford ray vargas isaac dog but isaac Dogbo still has a little bit left in the tank he was world champion lest we forget you know so nick ball is doing very well i like that he's staying active i've always, i say his style to me it's entertaining it's all action as much as i like nick ball i can't help but feel that even though he's only 27 years old i would give him another three years maybe a little bit longer but i don't see him with that style i don't see him having longevity at world level anyway and you know he's a featherweight so they don't tend to have much longevity anyway like it'd be, be rare to see a featherweight in their mid 30s doing particularly well you know someone like well, because you know he's not an air as a bantamweight but he, he's one of the exceptions of someone who can go late in their career but you know it's very rare you see them go very long into their career and I think Nick Ball enjoy him while we have him. He might not beat everybody in the division. You know, I'd like to see a rematch with Ray Ford. I'd like to see a rematch with Vargas. But I like what I see from Nick Ball. I think he's tremendously entertaining. I just think with that style, it's not going to give him much longevity. I don't think. But in this fight, I mean, he, he looked the business. I mean, Ronnie Rios was down several times. Ultimately, I swear to God, right. When that knockdown around 10 happened, it was Bob Williams was the referee. He was going to let him continue. I was watching that knockdown. I was like, you do not let him continue. Do not. He was going to, I'd convince it to tell, if the corner hadn't thrown the towel in, that Bob Williams would have let that, would have let it continue. I was looking at him and I was like, he's going to flip it, let that fight go on. He didn't, thank God. I mean, it would have been an absolute joke if he had, it was Bob Williams was the referee. I was thinking, I was like, please don't tell me he wasn't. No, he was. I was like, he's going to let him carry on and he's no shape to continue. Thankfully, the corner did the right thing and threw the towel in. Would have been madness to let that fight carry on. But yeah, Nick Ball gets the win. That's probably him done until next year. Now, we're hearing rumours of it. Now, I knew that there was a proposed Saudi date in February as a boxing show, but we didn't know what it was going to be. I'm wondering, is he targeting a day out on that one? Possibly. Also on Friday, Yannabek Alim Kanuli successfully defended his title against a man by the name of andre makalayev i think it's how you say that guy's name this was over in sydney australia now i have to say i did see well sydney new south wales i'm not really familiar with australia so if sydney is in new south wales or if it's not forgive me now yannabek to me i i genuinely thought after his last fight i was like that's the end of him at middleweight i didn't think he would be at middleweight again made this weight apparently quite easy some people were saying so uh, look maybe it was mishandled done wrong the previous weight cut i don't know but he looked okay in there he looked devastating i mean he had this guy down in round number two and it looked like it'd be a blowout it, it looked like it'd be a quick demolition job for yannabek no he hung tough he seemed to acclimatize a little bit to the power of yannabek but ultimately in round number nine and yeah the referee 100% with the stoppage 110% Yannabek was and you could see how ferocious he is because when he was going there he was like no I'm gonna no okay I won't hit him that's what he was like um, so yeah Yannabek is back on now at middleweight I hate to say it I hate to say it but you've literally got Hamza Shearas and Yannabek and that's really it I mean that's really it I mean the, the, the Charlo I don't know what he's doing Lara is old as the pyramids Adamez isn't too bad. I mean, Shane Mosley Jr. is quite highly ranked. That tells you all you need to know about middleweight and state it's in. When Shane Mosley Jr. is like number, well, on box rec anyway, he's highly ranked. I know that doesn't mean much, but that kind of tells you all you need to know about middleweight. If Shane Mosley Jr. is a contender, then you know that that's really, yeah, yeah, that that's really what, what, what that's really all I got to say about that one so that is the situation with middleweight they are the fights now obviously we got to talk about some of the news and tyson fury he has been he has been talking a lot i'm sorry by the way if you can hear my phone going off i thought i have it i'll put it on vibrate there 
so if someone texts me again it won't be i caught i actually had it on vibrate there you go it's vibrating now so we're good so tyson fury gave an interview with queensbury and he is less than pleased shall we say with alexander rusek and their team to say the least he's also expressed interest in a joshua fight he's expressed interest in a trilogy with alexander rusek but one of the things he confirmed is that in this rematch he's looking to not change things up from a team point of view he's confirmed that sugar hill andy lee and john fury they will stay in the team so he's not changing any of that he's not changing it He's not going to blame it, he says, on his condition or his coach. He says he knows what to do. He says, there's no secret. I'm going in there to knock him out. I don't think I'm going to get a decision no matter what I do. So I have to take it out of the judge's hands. I believe I have to get him out of there. So, yeah, still acting like, uh, the, the, the top comment on X there, still acting like he should have won the decision. There you go. I mean, Tyson Fury, uh, I, I did a live today. Right, and, and someone asked me about John Fury being in the team and, and how will he affect it. And I said, you know what? John Fury has been suspiciously quiet since Tyson Fury lost. And I believe he was at the Joshua fight, if I'm not mistaken. But again, John Fury is someone who he always makes a point to be the one who's talking. His voice is always heard. But he has been very quiet since the Tyson Fury loss. And I genuinely thought he would be non-stop give it at that give it at that we were robbed it was political because i look back to when huey fought joseph parker and that was a stinker of a fight it wasn't a great fight i thought parker deserved to win yeah the scorecards were a bit wide but i thought parker did deserve to win now some would say maybe huey because he he didn't land that much but you know he was not getting hit at the same time some people felt that maybe he did did scrape it okay everyone's talking to their own opinion i personally didn't i thought he was too negative to warrant winning the fight but there you go john fury was livid in the aftermath of that fight he was livid he was saying things that i'm not going to repeat on here but he was going to type in john fury huey fury joseph parker he was livid post fight we got robbed we won it's all political this that and the third none of that post fury post fury you said none of it absolutely none and you would think that John Fury would be, you know, front and center of all that. A part of me feels as though, because even Shane has kind of like like said it basically, that, ah, look, you know, it was a competitive fight, this, that, and the other. People like Simon Jordan, who originally were like, well, it was close. Now they're saying, nah, it wasn't. It, it was a new sec win. I think John Fury knows deep down that that was a new sec win, and he's not going to stick his neck in it. And that's why he's keeping quiet. And as for Tyson Fury saying, I'm not going to get a decision, this, that, and the other. Listen, the boxing establishment were desperate for Fury Joshua. They were absolutely desperate for that fight. He had everything in his corner. Everything. And that's why Alexander Usek, it's not just the fact that Usek gets on with things. It's not just the fact he's a talented fighter. It's the fact that Usek is never the A-side. He is never the A-side when he's taking these fights. And he's going in there and he's winning them so convincingly. Try as best they will, and they have tried it on two occasions, to rob him. They can't. What more do you need to say about Alexander Rusek that's not already been said? Now, I also noticed, well, I know, it's like, I know I've seen it. Tyson Fury isn't happy with Team Usek. He said, you had your shot, but you couldn't finish the job. Now you're about to feel the wrath of a menace. F Usek, F management, uh, Clemus management, F Alex Krasuk, if you're down with that. People were saying that was a two-pack reference, by the way. I've never been a fan of two-pack, so reference went way over my head. People were saying, that, you didn't know it's two-pack? I was like, never a two-pack fan, to be honest with you. No, I don't think there's any song he's ever released that I've liked or really religiously sat down and listened, you know. But anyway, he said, if you're down with that Usek, then F you. Gypsy King 2024, coming for you. December 21st is mine three-time heavyweight champion of the world yeah he's not best pleased with alexander rusek at all or his team and it seemed only a couple of like it was only a couple of weeks ago at the joshua show he was praising alexander rusek saying you know you beat both these guys this that and the other it's a strange one you know some people have felt that tyson fury this is him how would i describe it you know showing signs of mental fragility it's a weird one because Fury in the run-up to the Usyk fight, 
the first one, was very, whenever he was in Usyk's presence, he was so agitated and angry towards him. So angry and agitated towards him. Now he's doing it online a lot more now. And when he was going into that fight, he was listing these reasons as to why he can't beat me, why he won't win, why, it's like, yeah, but you're talking about past instances and you're leaving out details as well. Like, well, Evander Holyfield couldn't beat Riddick Bowe, uh, except for the time he did. Just saying. He was leaving out all these details and it was almost like, well, I can, I'm, as far as I'm concerned, it was him trying to convince himself and doing these press conferences in the middle of Morecambe, which is hard to get to, very hard to get to. Even from Manchester, it's not the straight, it's not the most straightforward. And doing it with, you know, only your team. No members of the team who said to, you know, review anything you're saying. That all to me just reeked the desperation. And this to me is is kind of the same. It's like, you know, okay, you're going to insult them left, right and centre. You're saying, you know, you got robbed and this, that and the other. And you're saying, oh, I have to go for the KO. Now, listen, going for the KO against Alexander Usyk might not be a bad idea. I always felt that if you want to be aggressive against them, Joshua should have been could have been should have been wasn't fury should have been more aggressive could have been should have been wasn't you can definitely you could definitely win some rounds but at the same time alexander rusek it's not just as simple as being if it was that easy everyone would do it it's not as simple as just being aggressive with him being aggressive with him and try to push him back and dictate you dictate the pace it will help you but alexander rusek is great at adjusting and it also puts you at risk of getting hit a lot more which fury doesn't he was hit plenty in the first fight doesn't want to get hit plenty in the second fight so he'll need to change things up but the problem is is that he's still making these references and saying you know oh, i won't get a decision as if he did nothing wrong and it was a clear win listen john fury if john fury himself really believed tyson won that fight he would be front and center my son is the champion they robbed us they did us they robbed he's not doing that why isn't he doing it there you go that's what i gotta say on that one now also anthony joshua because eddie hearn has basically i'm gonna read this here is what eddie hearn said to fight uh, fight hub tv the joshua dubois rematch will likely take place in Riyadh next year if it actually happens hearn explained that he expects aj to make the final decision on his move in the next coming weeks so you know we don't know the ins and outs joshua has a say on it apparently team dubois have a say on it as well and sure why wouldn't they want a rematch because make an absolute bomb again and you'd be the firm favorites going into this fight so you know why wouldn't you want to do it eddie hearn says he expects joshua to stick with ben davison for the potential rematch he said he's happy with the training camp he was in great condition he was sparring really well in my opinion there won't be any changes well, I don't think there. I, I think at this point now, you're going. You know, you're not going to bring any more out of Anthony Joshua than he's already has. I, I don't see the point in changing things now. I, I genuinely don't. I don't see why you would change it. To be honest with you, I think that yeah, leave the team as is. And look, Ben Davison is not a bad trainer. He's not. He maybe didn't give Anthony Joshua the best advice in there, but as many people have pointed out, Anthony Joshua is a big boy you know in terms of boxing you know he's a veteran now i mean people would see him as one of the old guard and if you're one of the old guard you would think that you would have a wealth of experience behind you that you know what to do in certain situations so what ben davison maybe didn't give anthony joshua the best advice you would think that joshua should have the wherewithal at all to know i really should be doing this he didn't so him sticking with davison listen i don't think ben davison is a bad coach and who else are you going to get? Because you're not going to make Anthony Joshua any better at this point in his career. So you may as well just stick with Ben Davison. Fury also said on TNT, at the end of the day, it'd be a travesty if we didn't fight. No matter if he has 20 losses, if he doesn't win another fight and has 10 years away from the game, it doesn't matter. We have to fight. It'd be a travesty. Well, as I've said in a previous video, that if... Fury and Joshua fought next year. If you say Joshua rematched Dubai and lost again, and Fury loses again to Usyk, if they fought next year, say summer of next year after all that, would it have the same appeal to the casual fans as it would if it was for Undisputed? Of course not. Would it have the same appeal to the fans if it was for just a world title? Again, no, of course not. Even if they both had losses, it, it still wouldn't. But would it still appeal to the fans? Yeah, it would. Amir Khan and Kel Brook were, were at the end. They both retired after their fight. But nevertheless, people were still... I was intrigued with it. Loads of people were still intrigued with it. Now, Amir Khan and Kel Brook would pale into insignificance in comparison to Fury Joshua, even at this point in their careers. So a fight that did as well as Kel Brook and Amir Khan 
if you imagine Fury versus Joshua, even if they both have back-to-back -back losses, it will still do very, very, very good numbers. It wouldn't do the, you know, groundbreaking, you know, crazy numbers that it would do if Joshua had beaten Dubois and Fury had beaten Nusek back in May. It, it wouldn't do those numbers. It just wouldn't. But it's it's still going to do very good. You know, I mean, like Amir Khan Kelbrook, I don't think I, I don't think either fighter were complaining about how well the fight did. I know it could have done better if it was in their prime, but it still did pretty good. And I think Fury versus Joshua would still... Look, at the end of the day, I'd want to see them both fight in their prime. We're not going to get that. But I would still watch it. I'd still do plenty of videos. I'd still do a live watch along. I'd still do plenty for the fight if we got it announced. A fight who... Well, a fighter who has been announced. Let's just say that. A fighter who's been announced is Anthony Yard. He will return on October the 19th at the Copper Box on the undercard of Adam Azim versus O'Hara Davis. Good old tried and tested to be confirmed. Anthony Yard's main guy. You know, Tunde has been with him through the whole of his career, as has to be confirmed. To be confirmed is Anthony Yard's main guy. He should send to be confirmed a Christmas card every year because he uses them so goddamn much. But in reality, look... I'm happy to see Anthony Yard back in action. Yeah. I still think he's made an absolute balls of his career over the last year. And I mean that really. He has made an absolute balls of his career over the last year. I mean, he could have been part of the Queensbury side in the Matchroom Queensbury show. He could have been fighting Joshua Boazzi at Wembley Stadium. He could be making a lot more money. Now he's in the copper box fighting to be confirmed. And he's 33 years old and no sniff of a title shot. Flipping brilliant. I just, I don't understand it. And I, it's not that I don't like Anthony Yard. I do. I've always been very, very highly of Anthony Yard on here. I think he's tremendously talented. But there's nothing more frustrating than a fighter with wasted potential. I guarantee you I'm going to be doing a video when it's all said and done on Anthony Yard and saying, this guy had so much potential that's just never been realized. That's just been wasted. You see fighters who don't have an ounce of the talent of Anthony Yard and I don't mean this in a disrespectful way so don't take this in a disrespectful way win world titles like Ricky Burns and Darren Barker I mean no disrespect but they are nowhere near as talented as Anthony Yard nowhere near they were able to go and pick up world titles their career wasn't managed as bizarrely in terms of matchmaking you know you could say Anthony Yard's made money with the Adidas deal and stuff like that fair enough but in terms of him realising his talent it's been managed bizarrely like ridiculously the man is 33 years of age he is a veteran now in terms of professional boxing and he's still being treated like a prospect oh he needs to fight to be confirmed he needs to fight this guy this guy who who the hell are these guys why isn't he fighting his contemporaries why isn't he looking to get another crack at a world champion well he is well you know oh yeah fighting to be confirmed with you know 10 losses and five wins yeah that'll 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 strike fear into the hearts of the champions won't it it's just so frustrating the way his career has been handled. It really has. And like I say, he's made an absolute balls of it over the last year. He really has. He really, truly has. I see uh, Liam Paro will fight Richardson, Hutchinson, Richardson Hitchens, I should say, on December the 7th in Puerto Rico. I'd be very surprised if Subrael Mateus is not fighting on that show. I'd be very surprised because, you know, it's in Puerto Rico at the end of that's where he's from. Very surprised if he's not on that show, but I like Liam Paro. We'll, we'll keep an eye on him. You know, December the 21st, we are getting Fury versus Usyk, right? Because I think that card will be brilliant. Christmas Eve, as if things don't get any better, we have Naomi Inouye one more time on Christmas Eve. Happy flipping Christmas. And if you're lucky enough, like myself, I will be, to have Christmas Eve off, then there you go. Honestly, I'm I'm I love watching. I love watching. Anyway, anyway, as many of you know, I love watching it. Terence Crawford was having a few back and forth with Tiafima Lopez on social media. Crawford has challenged Tiafima Lopez to a fight and beat Israel Majamov in order to fight him next. Yeah, I seen this. So they had like an exchange on Instagram or something like this, and he said, Crawford, you look like you're in one effed up situation with top rank. You want to fight uh, what you're contracted to fight for. Uh, and y'all say, I'm looking for a payday. Y'all kill me with the BS. Tiafima Lopez, you over there hurting, I see. Laugh now, cry later, Crawford. I'll fight you for free. Destroying your legacy is worth more than money to me. I'll fight you for free. Destroying your legacy is worth more than money to me. And Was he trying to make that rhyme? Tiafima Lopez. 
he would get absolutely obliterated by Terence Crawford. Obliterated. I mean, his punching power hasn't been the same at 140. Yeah, good luck going up to 154. That's what I'll say there. Crawford was even talking about McGregor, like offering him, you know, things and stuff like that. I love Terence Crawford. He's one of my favorite fighters. He's one of the greatest fighters of this era. He's just tremendous. If it's not Canelo, then I don't, then I'm worried we won't see him again. If it's not Canelo. And I say worried I won't see him again. I mean, he's, the man's 37 years old. He's done it all. He's not obliged to stick around, but I know it's, it almost seems like, you know, with Usyk, you could kind of see the end coming and you're kind of prepared for it. Like, like I know Usyk probably has another fight, maybe two at max left in him. Same with Fury, probably. And probably the same with Anthony Joshua. So you're kind of prepared for that. You can kind of see that both these guys, and they're nearing the end. With Crawford, you don't really think of it like that. You just think like, oh, he's got plenty of time left. And you're like, oh, sh he's 37 years old and he's a 154 pounder. That's, that's not got a great deal amount of time left. So yeah, you don't kind of really think of Crawford leaving, but I would say he's on his way out. Uh, if he doesn't get Canelo, I'd say then I, I don't think he'll fight any of the champions. I, I don't. I think he'll just bow out and say, see you later. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, and I will talk briefly. We have to do a preview, a proper preview of Baturbia versus Bivol. I can't wait. I've said it once, I'll say it again. I think it's a tremendous fight. I think it's going to be brilliant. I'm going to record my prediction video tomorrow morning at some point and get that out tomorrow evening. It's going to be epic. That's all I'll say on that. The fight. And I'm sure the prediction video will be epic as well. But the fight's going to be epic. Let me know your thoughts. I hope you all have a great week. I, like I said, I, hope, I always say, I hope everyone has a great week. I hope something good happens to someone. And yeah, let's, uh, let's have a good week. Let's all of us have a good week. And yeah let's hope it's gonna be good so i'll leave it there hope you enjoyed it smash the like button if you could hit subscribe of course you haven't already peace